Hey everyone, this is Eric. Um, it's a great day of recovery, one day at a time. I have um, lots of programs for you. I was inspired by someone calling. Our office is just swamped with calls and people were asking for help. And I thought I need to just make more videos of talking about stuff. <laughs> so the recovery books. So we're going to talk about which program for you. It all began with Alcoholics Anonymous. So you probably have seen this in my hand in almost every video. Um, it's highlighted. Doesn't mean anything. It's just a cookbook where if you do what it says, it works really well. Um, it relates to early Christian principles, not to offend anybody out there, but if we want to get well, sometimes we have to set aside our own ideas and just keep an open mind. But the gist of 12 steps is that in America, um, Protestant Christianity was about gathering more information. Um, and I, I'm not speaking for any 12-step group in particular. This is just my own thought. But when the founders of AA came to these Oxford groups, which focused on steps, which focused on doing something to attract God's grace, meaning divine energy, in specific Christian terms, meaning the Holy Spirit, uh, not trying to offend anybody, but just this is how it connects with those of you who are Christian. Um, you're attracting this grace by these steps. So AA kind of was an off, developed out of these Oxford groups. From there, other groups started. Uh, Narcotics Anonymous. Um, let's see here. And I'm going to show that. So you can look at, excuse the errors here. It means I'm a human being. Um, there's a comma where a dot should be. <laughs> Am I going to be compulsive enough to fix that? Um, I might. There. It shows you we can fix things um, live here. Narcotics Anonymous. Again, I there's stories of people using the steps in this book and they get sober. And a, it's good. Um, in fact, I like the writing in this book. The difference is I would stick with this and then use this. This describes the problem. This may describe the problem a little bit. Going to AA, you may get a little bit of the problem, but you won't really understand the nuances of that. Um, Narcotics Anonymous is for those who struggle with drugs, um, opiates, I would say psychedelics, even marijuana. It's not a bad um, program. And I am looking for another book. Hold on. I had thought I got every book, but this is Marijuana Anonymous, okay? Life with Hope. And um, it returned to living through the 12 steps and 12 traditions of Marijuana Anonymous. Really important to understand the problem, okay? So we don't have that listed. We'll put it under a description, but I, uh, Sexaholics Anonymous. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I thought I had every book. Yeah, so this Sexaholics Anonymous book is the earlier version, but um, it's a white book now, probably a good idea, so as not to expose one's recovery to the world, but really good writing. Um, there is so much good writing in this that you go, whoa. Like, for instance, a phrase I like, it says, many of us this isn't talking about letting go of control. 
It says many of us felt, and this is my paraphrase. Um, I'll just live with my paraphrase, but you can find it. It says that many of us felt as though we were going to step off the edge into oblivion, but instead of surrender killing us, it killed the obsession. And I believe that's true with every addiction. That when we begin to let go of control, God can begin to work. And if we don't let go of control and we don't even know we're not letting go of control, then we're stuck in recovery. We try harder, 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 white knuckling it. This is kind of the, the significance of this when I do this. It turns into a fist too, talking about not letting go of control uh, versus open-handed saying, God, you can have all of me do whatever you want. I'm not going to think anymore. I'm not going to try harder. I'm not going to analyze things to death or try to figure things out. I've got to let go of control. And it does feel like we're stepping off the edge into oblivion. But instead of surrender killing us, which it does kill us, I believe it kills myself, my ego, to let go and to ask for help. It's humbling to ask for help. I believe anytime we raise our hand and even to a human being asking for help, it's an act of humility. If I got this, <laughs> those signs along the side of the road, you got this. Oh, yeah, right. That's as stupid, uh, in my opinion, as um, just say no. Oh, yeah, that, that that really worked in my life. Just say no to drugs. Just say no to lust. Just say no to overeating. Just say no. In fact, I think it was the government who put that together. Um, I have an idea. Why don't they just say no to their problems? It doesn't seem to work. It seems like we need a power, specifically God greater than ourselves, to restore us to sanity. Um Let's see. That are, oh, there are other programs for um, sex addiction. There's Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. I have the book here. And it was originally called the St. Augustine Fellowship. I'm not really a fan of this. I'm entitled to my own opinion, not putting it down. It's just that you define your own sobriety. So... Just to be clear, you could say, hey, I don't sleep with prostitutes, but I could masturbate. I would say that that's still probably using less. Same thing here with Sex Addicts Anonymous. Again, I'm not trying to put it down, but you define your own sobriety. There are some principles that I like from it. Um, if you are nowhere near an essay meeting, now with Zoom, in the old days, I would have said, go to one of these meetings in person. But... And it could be that you can divine your own sobriety by a definition that you find is really going to work. SA, Sexholics Anonymous, definition of sobriety says that we believe that it's progressive victory over less and that um, no sex out, outside of marriage or sex with self, but just in a committed marriage. So you can see how that one could be defining sobriety be like saying well i just won't drink hard liquor i'll just drink um beer it's like saying i won't use marijuana anymore i will just drink or you know it, we, we there's all these things where we switch addiction i will say addictions very sneaky very sneaky cocaine anonymous i don't have it listed but this, this is an important point, going to the program that will help you identify the problem is going to be key. If you, if I, I know, may, I may know that what the solution is, I may know the steps, try to work the steps, but if I don't really see clearly the problem, I can't really repent or change from it. So that's what these programs are about is you go there and you go, oh, yikes <laughs> um in fact i will jump to oh it's the next one on the list that is anonymous um i will share i had this issue debtors anonymous is interesting it's similar to overeaters anonymous overeaters anonymous 
um, is for those that find themselves in a state of compulsively overeating, but also under eating, compulsive non-eating behavior, which we call anorexia, or binge and purge, okay? So um, the 12 steps of Overeaters Anonymous, this is uh, Bill B's story. You can find these at used bookstores. Um, another. Again, I'm a fan of the AA book. Get through the OA program just like the steps. Just change the words from compul from drinking to compulsive overeating or compulsive sex or gambling, etc. Even people in OA, I'm just, I'm not speaking for OA, but I've heard a number of speakers will say I use this to get people through the steps, and I think that's really a good idea. Um, so back to Debtors Anonymous again. I went to Debtors Anonymous, didn't really know what I didn't know. I it took my breath away, like. And I went back 10 years later. It shows you how slow I am. It's weird. We just don't want to see what we don't want to see. But I had a compulsive spending problem, but as well as compulsive under earning, like money, anorexia. Um, finally, when I bottomed out again, I then went to meeting. I thought, OK, I know how to do 12 steps, but I'm just going to sit in meetings. I don't recommend just sitting in meetings, but in one year I made more than I'd ever made just by going and getting the information. And then I went through the steps in a 14 week program, six o'clock Tuesday night. It was very simple. What did they do? It was a format using the Alcoholics Anonymous, which I use today, changed my life. Uh, this will, Currency of Hope will tell you what the problems are. There's nuance here. There's like avoiding vagueness. I don't want to know how much is going in and how much is going out. That's kind of similar to overeating and undereating. I don't want to know how much food or how many calories, but it's not a diet and this isn't a budget. It's a spiritual program where you work through the steps, you attract the grace of God, and then the compulsion leaves. Okay. Um, let's go to somewhere similar. Gamblers Anonymous. Um, a new beginning. I have two copies, one in paperback. I, I, it, this is my hoarding addiction. Um, no, what happens is I will go to a, a used bookstore. If I see this, I'll have an extra copy. I just know the price of what I paid for it and say, hey, so-and-so, I have a book here. Do you want to buy it? It gets this in their hands faster. Um, yeah, I can say this. Um, so what inspired me is someone called with the issue of compulsive gambling. And it reminded me that each addiction is different, like a compulsive um, well, someone who uses drugs would go, why would you spend all your money at the casino? It makes no sense. Or a person with, um, marijuana anonymous. Okay. I'll, there's workaholics anonymous. Okay. So different, this looks different than um, compulsive marijuana use, okay? This is about laid back, let me avoid things, uh, the path of least resistance. This seems to be numbing oneself with compulsive work. Now, I can snicker. I, I've done this. Like, how on earth could Mr. Recovery snicker when I hear another 12-step program? Like, really, they have that? And then I find myself in it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've learned not to snicker. How do I know what I don't know? And it turns out that um, I don't have to go to every meeting. I have one basic thing I do. It takes about 10, 15 minutes in the morning, 10, 15 minutes at night. It's um, 
the 12 steps and I get through the steps um, quicker. Um, why would I read literature? To help me know what the problem looks like. So back to like compulsive debting, there's a certain vagueness. I don't want to know what's going on. So avoiding um, people could be doing gaming or um, compulsive exercise or something, compulsive work. Process addictions are addictions that are uh, behaviors. And often we have to live with them. Like I need to work. I need to be able to spend. I don't need to have sex to live, but I do need to eat. Um, so um, gambling, sex, you could put as a process. Most people do, but technically you don't need it. Um, but drugs, alcohol, those you can live without. Okay. Let's talk about some of the anons. What happened in the early days of AA, the family members of alcoholics realized we need a program for ourselves. They found themselves resentful, bitter, controlling, uh, black and white thinking, emotionally um, not doing well, etc. They used this book to get better. Today, you won't find this in Al-Anon. I think that's a huge mistake. It's This is what started it all, but they use their own program literature, which defines the problem. So um, Al-Anon, I put these up here so that you can find them, but if you notice, you could almost Google anything resembling the addiction problem you might have. And if it'll be an OA, DA, GA, you know, and it'll start to come up. Gamblers Anonymous, one in um, five compulsive gamblers will kill themselves. I've taken coursework in this. It's very neurological. It's very different than the other addictions. It's um, There's parts of the brain, the cingulate gyrus, that have to do with channel changing of the brain. Like when you get something stuck in your head and you can't change the channel, shift attention or focus, then you know you have an over functioning um, cingulate gyrus. I do EEG biofeedback to help with this. We get really good rates of recovery mixed with 12 steps. I'm looking here for some extra books. Um, these aren't conference approved books. What that means is you wouldn't find them in an AA program, but um, losing your shirt, house of cards, You'll find these, um, I think they're interesting uh, to learn more about the problem. The denial with gambling is very strong. The family members um, very tied into supporting that. Children of compulsive gamblers have really interesting stories to tell. So the Anon means I have the disease I may not be able to have the compulsivity of drinking, but I have um, grown up with alcoholics, um, been affected. Um, I have other videos on the effects of growing up in an alcoholic family. Um, on that note, adult children's anonymous. <laughs> I, I, I'm not commenting on this other than it's a big, thick book. What's, I guess, nice about it is they put all the literature, I think, in one book. This, in my experience, I've gone um, right before the pandemic. I found it useful to sort out things related to codependency. I didn't spend a lot of time working through the steps there. Um, Essanon, if you have a family member, which, hold on. <laughs> With compulsive sexuality, I would highly, highly recommend looking at Essanon. This is called Reflections of Hope. Very useful. Um, when you get to the Anons, like Al-Anon, Nar-Anon, for those family members with drug addicts, um, loved ones, um, Essanon for sexaholics, Gam-Anon, 
for those with compulsive, um, ga not gaming, but uh, gambling. You're going to find that what draws you in at the beginning is the family member and, or friend, and you might, or fa you know, parents. And you might go, it's all about them. But then you learn that, no, I have the disease. I qualify because they'll use phrases. And so every program, they'll talk about the problem. They'll talk about um, all kinds of problems. Like they'll say we had uh, lived life from the standpoint of being a victim. Uh, we chose people who could not or would not love us. We lived with constant depression and anxiety. We um, tried to, we really believe that we can control someone else's behavior. Um, in Al-Anon, it says we don't force solutions. And it's like, wow, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I was a fixer. I was there to help you, whether you wanted help or not. That would be um, true of me. Um, we had trouble feeling our feelings. A lot, every addiction, we have troubles with feeling our feelings. Um, if you go to any of the websites, you'll, you'll um, go to the problem, see if you qualify. There'll be something like um, questions to ask yourself. But like, for instance, I like this um, from SA. Uh, Many of us felt inadequate, unworthy, alone, and afraid. Our insights never matched what we saw on the outsides of others. Early on, we came to feel disconnected from parents, from peers, from ourselves. We tuned out with fantasy and masturbation. We plugged in by drinking in the pictures, the images, and pursuing the objects of our fantasies. We lusted and wanted to be lusted after. Um, and it goes on to other specifics, but it says that the only way we knew to be free of it was to do it. Um, this produced guilt, self-hatred, remorse, emptiness, and pain. And we were driven ever inward, away from reality, away from love, lost inside ourselves. Our habit made true intimacy impossible. We can never know real union with another because we were addicted to the unreal. We went for the chemistry, the, the connection that had the magic because it bypassed intimacy and true union. Fantasy corrupted the real, lust killed love. First addicts, then love cripples. We took from others to fill up what was lacking in ourselves, conning ourselves time and again that the next one would save us. We were really losing our lives. So, so here, my emphasis is, yeah, this is Sexaholics Anonymous, but compulsive spending took me away from reality. It made true intimacy impossible. I, I work with people who have compulsive hoarding. If you notice and watch the shows on hoarding, you'll see that hoarding creates such a barrier between the person who's compelled to possess things and connecting with God and other human beings. You'll see that in the problem, there's never enough. And that, um, that we were lost inside ourselves. And we went for the chemistry. So the chemistry for shopping or the chemistry for the donut, <laughs> the chemistry for work, that we were just compelled to work, work, work. We, we aren't at the kids. Well, we are at the kids' birthday party, but we're in the other room running to the laptop just to see what's going on. So you're going to see the need for, if you struggle with any of these things, to, to read about the problem, to really understand what it was like. Um, yeah, because they don't really cross over. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, but there's areas where it doesn't, okay? Uh, when drug addicts drive through a certain part of town, they're going to be triggered. Compulsive gamblers, we may drive by casinos and go to a grocery store and see a slot machine or a um, some kind of advertisement for lottery. We may not think anything of it, 
but the gambler is going to be triggered by that. I'm um, not to get graphic here, but it's important to understand that people with compulsive sexuality are going to be triggered differently. If they have a fetish with articles of clothing, they, they have a difficulty going into just a regular department store without being triggered. Uh, that same <laughs> grocery store that has everything, <laughs> you may be triggered by the bakery. That just going into a bakery to smell all those items and it just starts to put you in cycle. Um, people with work, <laughs> I left my cell phone home today. Um, I'll pick it up later. That little device can trigger them for work. That when, so when one goes to WA, they set a limit how much they're going to work. And there's something called work avoidance, very similar to like work anorexia, where they, they binge and purge. They binge with all this work, and then we just don't work. We crash and burn. Um, so really important to go to a meeting that you think your addiction or compulsive behavior is the biggest thing that will get you into trouble. So, well, hopefully this gets you off started in the right direction. I will be posting um, the the links to meeting to not meetings, but the the um, book. Not well, not the books, but I'll be posting where you can find help. Okay. Uh, if you like us, you're welcome to like and subscribe, but you're also welcome not to do that. I've been told that it's the right thing to do to help spread the message. You have a great day of recovery and take care.